Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm a global artist ambassador for Phoenix 360, and I'm blessed to be joined today by the sculptor Janet Rutkowski. Hello, Janet. How are you? Hi, John. How are you? I'm great. And Phoenix viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Janet. Listen, I appreciate you being with me, and I'm looking forward to Janet sharing some of your sculpting with our audience. Okay, if we tune into some of your works now? Of course, I would love it. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, everyone, let's tune in now to some of the sculpture from Janet Rutkowski. Wow, Janet, amazing. I'm so looking forward to learning about you now. Can you tell me where are you from and how did you get involved in sculpting? Staten I'm from Staten Island, New York. It's a little island off of the edge of Manhattan. <laughs> um, but I am based in Brooklyn now. I'm a Brooklyn-based artist. Um, yeah, so I'm a native. That here. is excellent. Well, listen, I'm so thank you for joining me here from New York, right? And also I'm looking forward to learning you know, as far as your sculpture, how did you get first involved in becoming a sculptor? Oh, okay. Well, I, I attended the high school of art and design when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. I was fortunate enough to have an aunt who saw that I loved drawing and she convinced my parents to let me leave Staten Island on the ferry, on trains and go to school in the city. Wow. And I didn't utilize that as well as maybe I should have, but about 10 years later, I was getting that urge to create. And I took some classes at the new school, but I found three dimensional and that was the love. So I started with stone carving, wood carving and clay. Uh -huh. And another fortunate incident is that I had a teacher, his name was Ron Maneo, his father and him ran a art studio called Art Life Craft Studio on the Upper East Side. And he said, Janet, you need to learn how to weld. Well, wow. case in point, all my clay items were blowing up in his kiln. So he really wanted to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I uh, went to the sculpture center, which was also on the Upper East Side. And I started to take welding lessons. And I don't know, fire, flames, welding, steel, spontaneity of a medium. I fell in love with it immediately. And Very now exciting. this is 35 years later, I'm still welding. Yeah, and that, listen, that is exciting because working with that element is so dangerous and also has some kind of such spiritual power. Um, but at any rate, you, you've done it to an extent in which now it's such proficiency, it's such art and, and such craftsmanship. So let me ask the question, your current project, Inner Citadel and Prophecy, tell me a little bit about it. So, you know, during, you know, the pandemic hit us and uh, a lot of artists, you know, we were forced into a lockdown. We were by ourselves. It was a very interesting time for creative people because you had to focus. You yeah. had to look within and kind of see where you were going, what you were doing, and you couldn't socialize. So now you could really focus on your art. So in the beginning, I started to draw and I, that wasn't my discipline. I did over 200 drawings, abstract uh, pencil, colored pencil, ink marker on Bristol board drawings. And while I was doing those, when I was home, locked down, when I got to my studio, had started from towers, big fan, read a lot of novels when I was a teenager, young adult. So of course, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, I started to build these towers. Ah. Somehow I was kind of researching names and trying to figure out what I wanted to call this group of work. And I came upon the writings of Marcus Aurelius. 
He uh -huh. was a Roman emperor and a philosopher. So I started to read these and I decided that I would name this group of work Reflections from the Inner Citadel because I felt I was fortifying myself. And the Citadel is also the safe place in a castle when it's being besieged. And uh, so I did an installation. I, was, I built quite a few pieces and I was offered a one person, a solo show in Manhattan at Time Arts Gallery during the heat of the pandemic. And I built this huge installation and I showed the inner citadel in, installation along with all my lot, many of my drawings. Mm -hmm. And it was such a amazing experience. And people came, of course, we were very careful. I sold work. I, it, it was the most incredible experience I to come out of such a brutal time. Yes. So it really did well for me personally and for many artists flourished at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that um, I've heard from other artists as well that this has been kind of an, an incubation period in which they could introspectively focus upon the art. And I think those that have chosen to do so have actually produced some amazing quality, you know, amazing work. Um, and, and people really are selling art also, which is incredible. People are buying art because they're maybe embellishing their homes and their spirit. So they feel the need to surround themselves with beauty mm -hmm. that maybe they weren't home so much, but now they are. So it really was quite an interesting, um, period of time. I find that very encouraging for the arts. And I'm glad that you have this expression that has been so well received. Um, and then how about the link to the prophecy? Uh, so, um, so prophecy is the new series of work. So now we're going into the future and we're coming out of our safe place slowly, but we don't know where we're going. We don't know what the future holds. Um, we're afraid, you know, people are uncertain. We don't know if we're gonna land back into our inner space again. Uh, so these pieces, most of them are rusted steel, found objects, and they're kind of guide, guiding posts, guiding, guiding, guidances mm -hmm. of prophecy, prediction, um, uh, predestiny. So this is a whole group of work that I'm going into the future with, and I'm hoping to find a place to show them soon. Oh, that's great. Well, those guideposts will be really interesting to find as you, you know, drop them and the installations take place and the possibility for people to connect with you to purchase. And let me ask this question. Do you promote your work then, Janet, on social media? So I have, I just built a new website. I found a wonderful person to help me on Squarespace. Right. And so I can manipulate it myself, finally. Uh, and uh, so it's um, www.janetrakowski.com easy enough yes. and it has all the inspiration for all these pieces and it also has i started a blog called scrap metal which i'm hoping people will subscribe to and and also give me what's happening with their lives but i'm on instagram uh -huh. facebook twitter linkedin all of the above so right. They can Excellent. find me everywhere. Well, I tell you what, Jenna. Yeah. And I hope that people contact me, share, you know. Absolutely. I also curate. I also curate. I'm a curator. So I'm always looking to meet new people and see new types of art. Right. So. Yeah, well, that's as well you should be. And it's great to mentor others as well and to bring them into your fold. And, you know, you are, do such incredible work, Janet. And so we're going to be following your progress and very happy that you're also featured on the Phoenix 360 app. I and love I, Phoenix. I, yeah, <laughs> great. Thanks so much. And listen, I want everyone to tune into the social media channels you find below for Janet Rakowski and look for her rising on Phoenix 360. And Janet, thank you so much for appreciating. You know, I really appreciate meeting you and, and learning about uh, your journey as an artist and all the work that you're creating uh, with such depth and meaning. Uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. You bet. You take care.